Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. We've been talking about that in these sessions and our series that we're calling Faith That Overcomes. And I'm telling you by the word of the Lord, no matter what you've been dealing with, it is overcomable. It is winnable. I know it may look bleak. It may seem hard. Maybe it's been a long time that you've been dealing with something that you uh, shouldn't have to deal with. Don't despair. Don't give up. Have faith and trust God that he'll show you what you need to see and know and do, and you'll come out. It is amazing. I've seen this so many times in my life and other people's lives around us, how quickly God can turn a situation around, how quickly he can bring you out, that in a matter of hours, and especially a matter of days, all the bad stuff that had happened seems like a bad dream that happened to somebody else because God has so turned it around and so changed your situation. Believe that that can and is happening for you. Father, all of us today agree together, praying for everybody that's joining and watching, asking for grace and help in the time of need, asking for answers, asking for the, the working of your spirit and your holy angels, the manifestation of your word, life-changing, life-giving word. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look again in our great textbook, the Bible, 1 John 5th chapter. 1 John 5, 1 says, Whosoever uh, believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Do you believe that? I'm, I'm looking at everybody. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? What does that mean? He is not just a man, not just a good moral person, not just a teacher. He is the Son of God, the fulfillment of prophecy. He was born of a virgin by a miracle. Now, if you say, well, I'm, I'm not so sure about that, then you're not saved. I know people don't like it that clear and plain, but the Bible's either true or it's not. If you don't believe that, then you don't believe he is the Christ. You believe he's just a man. Then if you believe that, he's not your Savior. You're not sa and there is no other Savior. You can believe that there is, but when you die, you're going to find out. There is one God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't just say, well, I don't know if I agree with you, preacher. Check your heart. Check in here, in your own heart. See what kind of witness you have about this. Not between me and you. Check your own heart. You were created of the God we're talking about. Your purpose for existence is to please Him. All things are created for His pleasure. And to accomplish his purposes and his will. Which is why human beings can never be happy doing their own thing. Ignoring God. Impossible. I don't care how much money you make. How famous you are. How much you succeed in, in your area. It will never be enough. You, you, if you reach that pinnacle of the height of your success. The next thing that happens is you'll go, I thought this would be better. I, th I thought this would fulfill me more. Because you're not just a natural being. You are made in the likeness and image of God. You are created to know Him, to fellowship with Him. You are created with the ability to commune with Him and understand God. This is big. Big, big. But He won't make you do his will. He won't make you believe on him. He won't make you follow him. He will not. It's completely up to you. 
So make the right choice. <laughs> if you're watching today and you've never done this, you've, you've never given your heart and life to the Lord, here's your opportunity right now. Right now. Everybody affirm or reaffirm your faith. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God I, do in you. I do believe in you. That you are the creator, you are the creator of, the and the of the heavens and the earth and everything in them. I believe you have sent your son, Jesus, to the cross. He paid for my sins. He was judged in my place. And you have raised him from the dead. And he is alive right now. King of kings, Lord of lords, soon to come again. Jesus, I confess you as Lord of my life, my Savior, my Redeemer forever. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Oh, glory to God. These things are beyond intellectual. They are beyond mental. They are eternal. Hallelujah. Anybody besides me glad that you're saved? Yes. Whoo. <laughs> well, in the, this saved walk is a walk of faith. Verse 4 says, whatever is born of God. And um, if you, just a few moments ago, if you prayed that prayer and you received him and you were born from above, born again, just then, this applies to you. You're born of God. And as one born of God, you are a born overcomer. A born overcomer overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. This is how. You walk out this victory, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Come on, everybody say it out loud with me. I am a believer. I am born of God. I am an overcomer. And the victory that overcomes the world is my faith. Hallelujah. So your faith and my faith is of utmost importance. Go to Romans 10, please. Romans 10. We looked at this a couple of times already. You might say, well, Brother Keith, didn't we already go over this? Yeah, I didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, spiritual things are beyond mental. Just because you heard it 30 times doesn't mean you've got it. And it's not a matter of just logging mental information. When something becomes revelation to you and comes alive in your spirit, like we're saying, it's beyond mental. And you don't have to ask somebody, did I get it? You know. <laughs> you go, oh, I see that. Oh, I see that. And it excites you. It stirs you. It's living. The Bible talks about that the word of the Lord is a, it's quick and quickening and alive. And so when you do get it, it's not just, hmm, yeah, I made a note of that. Uh-uh. It's a quickening. It's life that's manifested on the inside of you. That becomes part of your being. And that's how, your, that's how you govern your life going forward is in the light of that. In Romans 10, he's talking about being saved. He's talking about being born of God. And he said, verse 8, he said, The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, the word of faith which we preach. And in verse 13, he said, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That whosoever that is absolutely all-inclusive. I don't, it, it doesn't matter, I should say it like that, who you are, 
where you came from. It doesn't matter if your uh, ancestors were 12 generations uh, false God worshipers. If you will call on the name of the Lord, <laughs> hallelujah, you'll be saved. If you'll do what we just did a few moments ago, pray that prayer out of your heart and make that confession out of your heart with your mouth, you'll be saved. Doesn't matter how evil you were. Not to say that that's okay. But you can't be too bad for God to save you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the reason why Jesus had to come. Is because people couldn't save their self. They couldn't fix their self. That's why he had to come. And I've had people look at me and say, yeah, but preacher, you, you don't know what I've done. And immediately I say, yeah, and you don't know how powerful the blood is. The blood of the Lamb has the very life of the Creator God in it. The life is in the blood. Eternal life. It is more powerful than any sin, any violation, any bad thing you have ever done. And it is potent and powerful to cleanse us. And not just cover your sin, but to purge and cleanse so that it is not there anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're either clean or you're not. You're either forgiven or you're not. You're either made righteous or you're not. And you are. Are you? Yes. Somebody say, I'm forgiven. I'm, forgiven. I'm cleansed. Yes. I'm washed. I'm made righteous, made holy, accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. That's not something you earned. That's not something you achieved to. It's something you just received as a free gift. He goes on to say, verse 14, how will they call on him in whom they've not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? Well, they can't, they won't. How will they hear without a preacher? They won't. They can't. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Then he goes on to say, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But as we touched on a few days ago, this word hearing is the same word translated report. And it's also translated hearing. I'm not saying that's an incorrect translation. It is it is correct. But it's absolutely accurate to say faith comes by a report <laughs> and a report by the word of God or what or the saying of God, what God has said. A report. Why the emphasis on this word report? Well, the previous verse says, who has believed our report? So he didn't change subjects. Um, you know, that's why sometimes we need to do a little bit of study and looking up words because when something is three, four uh, translations removed from the original. Uh, the Lord helped them, but it was only the words that the Lord used when He spoke it is the perfect expression. And uh, a lot of modern translations have some, some bad parts to them, actually, because the translators have taken liberties with the text. And it's it's not actually a translation, it's a paraphrase. And what I mean by that is they're not translating word for word what the Lord said. They are telling you in their own words what they think he meant. That's dangerous. I said that's dangerous because that, that can't help but be restricted by their understanding, by their light and revelation. I don't need to be limited to your revelation. You don't need to be limited to my revelation. You need to hear exactly what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The way he said it. And let, let the Holy Spirit, 
who inspired it revealed to you and I as we're able to understand it, and that'll be progressively and more and more throughout our life. So uh, uh, I caution you about some of the different translations that I, I see some people uh, reading and even quoting. Uh, it's okay if you want to use it as long as you know what it is. It, it's, some of it's like even a commentary. <laughs> It's not an actual translation, or I, you know, I, I'm a Bible teacher, so I, I get into these things, but I really like transliteration. Um, one of my favorites is Young's literal translation. Dr. Young, who also authored Young's Concordance, so the man knew a thing or two about the original language. It was his life, and Original language reads different from our modern language, and so it's a little cumbersome sometimes to read it. You got, but I like accuracy, don't you? I like, oh, I, I want to I wanna hear what he said, the word he used, the way he said it. And when you, when you do that, you begin to see, oh, well, that's the same word he used over here. And that's the same word he used over here. And so that's why I bring this out. He uses the word report three times in a row. Why? What's the emphasis on that? This quote here, Isaiah, he said, said this. And this is in Isaiah 53. So hold your place. Go back to Isaiah 53. Let's remind ourselves of uh, where this came from, how he's saying this. It's actually the very first verse, and this is a well-known passage to many. It, 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 this is where the passage comes from, that he took our infirmities, he bore our sicknesses, he carried our pains, by his stripes were healed. But the very first verse of this says, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? These are two questions. Who has believed our report? What's the answer to that? Well, some have, some have not. I can't control if you believe the report or not. You can't control if I do. But I, I am in control of my choice, whether I believe the report or not. Uh, look back in, in Romans again. What report is he talking about? The report called the gospel. <laughs> and the gospel is what? The gospel is the report of the good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Report of the good things. Like we uh, got into yester on yesterday's uh, lesson for a while, I begin to touch on it. Um, sometimes people have called the de declaring of judgment as the gospel and said, you know, uh, the end is coming, uh, death is coming, eternity is, is, is ahead, and if you don't believe and if you don't change, you'll die in your sins, you'll die lost, you, you'll go to hell, you'll be judged if you don't receive Jesus. Well, uh, there's truth in those statements, but is that good news? Is that glad tidings of good things? Then it's not the gospel. It's not the gospel. And that's not what draws people to the Lord. Does anybody know what draws people to the Lord? The goodness. <laughs> right? The Bible said it's the goodness of the Lord that draws men and women to change, to repent, to come to Him. And, you know, just talking about judgment to come, though there's truth about it, that is, people can feel so terrible and they can feel so condemned and it will not make them want to run to the Lord. What happened when Adam and Eve sinned and, and disobeyed God? Uh, did it make them, when they realized, 
what had happened to them, how they had fallen. Did they want to run to God? They ran and hid. Isn't that right? They ran and hid in the shrubbery or whatever, or whatever it was. Why? That's what condemnation does to you. That's what guilt and shame does to you. It makes you want to pull back, pull away, not come close, but, but you know, that's what happened, you know, when the, the great catch of fish uh, with Peter and the apostles, and when he saw it, this is the very beginning days of his association with Jesus, he said, oh, Lord, you need to go away from me. I'm, I'm a sinful man. Well, this is the greatest day he's ever had. <laughs> they, they, he, he's heard Jesus preach and teach. He saw the greatest miracle of catching fish. This is money in his pocket. And he says, go away. <laughs> go away to the best thing that ever happened to him. That's sin consciousness. That's condemnation. That's guilt and shame. That's not the good news. Is that you're a sinner. And, and your righteousness is as filthy rags in the sight of God. And, and you have come so short of the glory of God. And, and if you don't believe on God, you, you'll die. And you'll be judged. And you'll be lost. And you could wind up in hell. That's not good news. What's good news? For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that all that believe on him would not be condemned, but would have eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good news. Yes. I said, that's good, that's good news. And that all that believe on him will be justified from all things that the law are trying to do good and be good could never accomplish. But that the blood of the Lamb will wash you clean like there never was any sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you are accepted that when God sees you, He actually sees the righteousness of Christ who never sinned and accepts you in the Beloved as His own child, giving you the full rights and privileges of the Son of God. That's good, news. that's good news. I said, that's good news. That's good, news. good news. And that you were born again and none of that evil, sinful stuff is in your inner man anymore. All those old things are gone, passed away. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus and you've been made right with his rightness. He gave you his name the authority of the name of Jesus, gave you the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, living in you, shed abroad his very own love in your heart. That's good news. I said, that's good news. That's good news. That's good news. That's good news. He took your infirmities. He bore your sicknesses. He carried your pains. By his stripes, you've been healed. Somebody say, good news. Good news, good news. Good news. with long life. He'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. Tell me, good, 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 news. good news. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Tell me what that is. What is that? Because though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor so that you through his poverty might be rich. Good news. good news. He good gives news. us richly all things to enjoy. Good news. good news. Now, just the things that I've said the last few minutes, do you, do you understand those are verses? Every one of those, that's not just something came off the top of my head. Those are verses, verses, verses. And yet, do you know, there's a lot of religious people that hear that and they go, oh, that's that that faith stuff, you better believe it. That's, that's that, you know, name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. That's those prosperity preachers and stuff. See, they have an aversion to good news. They, they grew up traditionally going to church and hearing bad news. And so they don't think it's gospel unless it's bad news. <laughs> Now, I know that's messed up, but that's because it's messed up. <laughs> I 
That's because it's, that's how the enemy does. He tries to pervert things, distort things. And so traditional religion has been so skewed and so corrupted like this that people have grown up, if they went to a traditional church many times, on a steady diet of condemnation, a steady diet of really bad news about how uh, inferior you are as a, a Christian. What a poor excuse of a witness or a light. Oh, we've come so short. Oh, we're all, you know, we're just, you know, old sinners, hopefully saved by grace. Well, that's a bad report mm -hmm. that I'm not even ranking a decent witness. <laughs> huh? That's a bad report that I'm not pleasing God at all. It's a bad report that we're not even sure if I'm going to make it in. <laughs> right? Yeah. Bad news. Bad, news. bad report. And so, but, but if people have grown up with that all their life, when they hear somebody like me waving their hands going, God is good. Yes. He'll heal you and it's good. He'll pay your bills. They go, mm, error. <laughs> error. No, why? Because it's not gospel. Because they're calling bad news gospel. But help me out. Glad tidings of good things. That's the gospel of peace. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of talking about how good God is and that his will is good every day of the week for everybody on the planet. I know not everybody's enjoying it, but it's still his will. I said, it's still his will. I want you to say it out loud. I do believe, I do believe God, is good. God is good and his will is good, his will is good. for everybody, for everybody. All, the all the time. And the gospel, the gospel. is the good, the good news of the good things, the good things. that our good, Lord the good Lord has done for us. Done for us. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And our time's up again today. As you can see, we're, we're just getting into our text good here. Come back tomorrow and let's learn some more here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.